Hello, I'm here to introduce a new game that I made called Empty Go. First, I'll explain the rules of the game. So, two players alternate turns with black going first. Um, during each turn, there's two phases. The first phase is the um, attack phase, and the second phase is the maneuver phase. So, during the attack phase, you can attack as many of your opponent's pieces as you want to. In order to uh, successfully attack, um, if you attack one of your opponent's pieces, your opponent can choose to defend it. In order to successfully defend it, they must draw three um, straight lines to three different sides of the board. And that is done by pulling the string taut above the board, like this. However, the straight lines cannot pass through an enemy piece. So for example, if there were this situation here, and a white were to attack black, black would be able to draw a straight line to this side of the board, this side of the board, and this side of the board. So that's three sides of the board, and they would be safe. However, if there was this situation, and white were to attack black, black would only be able to draw a straight line to this side of the board and this side of the board. Any straight line from this black piece to this side of the board or this side of the board would have to pass through a white piece. Because of this, black would fail to defend and their piece would die. And you can use, the um, game comes with stones, it also comes with these strings to draw, and it comes with these suction cups, which can be used to pick out pieces um, when it's a little bit hard to use your hands because there's a lot of pieces around. You can attack as many pieces as you want and destroy as many pieces as you want during your attack phase. However, if you fail three attacks, then you can't attack anymore that turn. After you attack, you have a maneuver phase where you must place a piece. Um, you can place a piece anywhere on the board, and um, it can even hang off the edges of the board a little bit, as long as uh, the center's on the board. And by the way, the board is 18 uh, stones long and 18 stone wide. And um, I've tried smaller boards, um, but it seems for smaller boards, there's like very simple strategies to win every game. So this is the smallest board that I tried um, that actually works uh, as far as having a game that doesn't uh, lose in like a few very simple ways to win it. Um, and it's also conveniently the length of a standard Go board which is um, uh, 19 stones long by 19 stones wide. And this actually, even though it's 18 stones long and 18 stones wide, it's really technically 19 stones long and 19 stones wide because you can hang half uh, stones off the board. So you can fit 19 on them. Um, so the way that you win is when it's your turn to, um, or when it's, your, when it's your opponent's turn to play a piece, and there's no room on the board for them to play a piece. That's when they lose. And that's the official way that you lose, but there's really two main ways that you can force that to happen. So, the first way that you can force that to happen is if you just beat your opponent really bad. You know, you, have, you surround them, you get rid of all their stones, and then you put the board in a situation like this one, where
you're in a, or you put the, you basically just take over the entire board and you put your stones in a situation like this where there's no way your opponent can play any piece um, that can't be instantly killed on your turn because wherever they play, they can at most reach two sides of the board. So once you're in a situation like this, you can just play stones and every turn your opponent will play a stone and you'll just remove it from the board. And you can guarantee that you'll be the last person to play a stone on the board because if your opponent had a stone on the board, you can just remove it and play over it. So it's impossible for your opponent to be the last person to play on the, on the board because if they are, you can just play right over them. Whereas they can't remove any of your pieces, so they'll definitely be stuck at some point and not be able to play beasts. <clears throat> the second way you can force that ending is if you control more territory than your opponent does at the end of the game. So for example, if you're in a situation like this, White can force the game in this situation <clears throat> to make it so that they are, are the last person to play a stone. And the way they can do that is because they have more territory. So there's um, two ways that they can basically have this happen. The first one is <clears throat> black plays in their territory and white plays in their territory. And um, of course white can only play in their territory and black can only play in their territory because if black plays in white's territory gets removed, and if white plays in black's territory gets removed. And there's no way that white can, from this side, you know, do anything to get rid of these pieces. These will always be safe. There's no thing black can do from this side to get rid of any of these pieces. These will always be safe. So then eventually black will run out of space and white will have space to spare. And at that point, it will just be like the normal end game where white controls all the remaining space that can be played on and it can ensure that it will be able to remove a black piece and play over it. However, black could realize that and play in white's territory every turn. In which case, white's only choice would be to remove the piece and I guess play in their territory. But, you know, black basically just stalled by playing in white's territory over and over and over again and the game would never come to an end. So in this case, what white can do is they can do something called like building houses. So they basically, the way it works, you, you kind of measure a one stone slot and you fill up the board with these one stone slots. And of course you keep them aligned. So now whenever black wants to play in their territory, they have to play assuming all of your territories fill up with these, this pattern, if they wish to play in your territory, they would have to play in these specific slots. Uh, they would ideally be tighter. It would make them really the right size. And what does that mean? Because all your slots would be in a row, even if black totally fills up every one of your slots, all your pieces that are making the slots will be safe because 
you'll be able to have a straight line go through the row and then just very subtly tilt it to technically hit whatever you want. And then once black fills up all their, these slots, then every single piece on the board would be filled up. And then they would have to start playing in their territory and fill up their territory. And of course, during that time, you would just play in black's territory and they would remove your piece. Um, or keep the, their piece and it would just be their demise faster. So at the end of all of that, what you could do is once black's territory is totally filled up, and of course you would never attack any of their pieces that are in here because you wouldn't want to, you know, open up any of their, um, give them any extra time to place pieces and stall. You could just attack pieces that are in these houses and play over them. Um, and, you know, once you did that, there would be no pace, uh, did that even one time, there would be no uh, spots left on the board for Black to play, and you would be able to win. And if Black tried to do the house method, method as well, they would run, run out of houses before you did, because you have more territory, you can build more houses. So basically, that's the way you make it so that if you have more territory than your opponent, you can still win the game. But technically, the only uh, rule regarding winning the game is um, be the last person on the board to play a piece. Um, so however you figure that out, if you can, you win. So that is MTGO. Thanks for watching.